I cannot express how amazing this thing came out. Look at it. It is so amazing. Let's go inside and take a look. But first, we are of course going to take a look at the outside. And coming through the side of the shopping district, you can really see just how massive this thing is. What you are looking at here is many, many hours on a creative server. Building this with everybody here on the server, helping to put it together. And as you can see, after all that time and effort, it came out amazing. Now here at the back, it is looking rather bland. However, it is going to start to look a lot better once we get some trees and some plants and flowers and maybe some other stuff back here too. We'll have to see how this whole area unfolds. We also have the river to where it's kind of cut off right now. Not exactly sure what's going to happen with this. We'll just have to see how everything unfolds. However, if we come around to the side here, you can see the other side is similar to the opposite side over there. And we got some nice windows inside of here with different color panes to give it a lot more texture. And also using some walls and some panes for inset to give it more depth. We also have a bunch of bushes on top with some flowering azalea leaves coming down. And there's also some of the glowberry vines. And of course you have wandering traders. We cannot forget the wandering traders because these guys never go anywhere. As you can see, we've, uh, we've already had a few come by. Now walking inside of the steps, the first thing that you will notice is I built the ceiling a little bit crooked. Yes, yes I did. I plan to fix it, but as of right now, that is how it has been built. You're welcome. But aside from looking at the hideous roof that I messed up, we have a beautiful fountain here and then also some supporting pillars that hold up a walkway up top. And we have multiple levels up here and a lot of this is still incomplete as we are probably going to be adding to this for some time in the future. However, if we go over here, we have what is going to be kind of like a little community billboard that we're going to have, along with some barrels and also a lectern with a book and quill. Inside of this side of the town hall, we have some rooms, and we're probably going to have individual rooms for all of the different players. So we have some of these, and most of them are very similar. Oop, let me close the door back. And this one is pretty similar as well. And then we have the hallway. There's still a lot of little loose ends that we have to tie up, such as these little blocks there. So don't mind stuff like that. If you go over here, we have another room. Lots and lots of rooms. Then we have a stairway in here, which is still under construction. We have a gel here that GG decided to build. Apparently this guy looks just like me. I wonder what he did to get in here. And, uh... Dark, I think Dark's taking a nap. I believe she's going to be putting a desk here with kind of a security guard to watch over these guys, but we'll have to wait and see what all she has planned for this. And she should probably go up a little bit higher with the iron bars because if this guy is anything like me, he can probably climb right over top of that. Same thing with Dark's side. In this door, we have another stairway going up. And then on this side, we have another room as well. And lots and lots of rooms for lots and lots of members. Over here, we are planning on doing a movie theater. We have some tinted glass inside of here just to keep all of the light out. That way it's going to be nice and dark inside of here. And I'm thinking that we're probably going to be making this floor go down at a downward angle. And then having a pretty sizable screen up top here. Maybe a projector in the back. Just to have a pretty cool little movie theater inside of here. There has been a ton of room inside of this town hall, however we did not just want to make it a bunch of rooms, we wanted to add a bunch of different things to kind of break up the design and fill up the very large space. So if you have any suggestions as to what we should add into this town hall, let us know. Over here is a area that I've been working on, well we'll start over here at the closet first. We have a very small closet here, and this is just a little bit of excess room, and kind of have a little bit more up here too. However, I don't know if I'm going to be filling this up or not. I might tear all of this out and not make it a closet. It might be filled up with redstone in the future. We'll have to see. However, the reason why we have that closet is if we come inside of here, it is actually the back of the fountain. Now, I ended up designing this fountain and it took me quite a bit of time. But I think that the time was a well worth sacrifice because it just came out phenomenal if you ask me. And I'm very proud of it. I do still want to bring in a few finishing touches, maybe some fish or some axolotl or something and put down here in the bottom. However, I don't know if they'll swim up the streams and commit Harry Carry, so we'll have to see on that one. However, walking in, you'll see that we have some tables and chairs. Now, these are not my design. These are actually built by Dark J. He ended up designing the entire kitchen area up there, 
and I've just pretty much brought it onto the server and built it, so credit all goes to him for this amazing design. However, I'm contemplating whether or not we should change out the white carpets for something else because as we come up here, you'll be able to see that it is quite a bit of white, and I don't know if we should put a secondary color in there. I do still have a stage here that I built with a little microphone. I figured that this uh, wither skull would make for a perfect microphone, so I ended up putting that down there. However, I'm not 100% sold on the actual stage area, so I might change this around too inside of the future. Coming up here, we get up into the actual cafe area. And this is pretty much what Dark J ended up designing. And I think that it really came out really good because he ended up putting in a bunch of time and coming up with overall a really nice design. However, I don't know, like I said with the tables, because there is so much white in here, we might try to try out a few different colors and see if there's something else that we like more. We have a librarian over here where he is pretty much destined to stay here the rest of his life. We have yet to give him a name. So if you guys come up with a name, let me know and I'll end up running it by the other members. And if we like it, we'll name them. As you can see, he is a very busy man. We have a ton of smoke coming up from all of his different cooking appliances. He's even cooking some fish and what looks to be some rabbit over there as well. And as you can see, all of the smoke ends up going outside. We have some top line luxury over here with all of our white leather seats. And speaking of luxury, look at this stone cutter. That is not part of the display. That's just me forgetting to pick stuff up. And we have seating that extends over there as well. And then we also have kind of a little balcony area that comes over here, which is, of course, for the VIP guest only. And if they sit here, they get a nice bird's eye view of the fountain from above. All in all, I think this area came out fantastic, and I'm extremely proud of it. Let me know what you guys think inside of the comments below. If there's anything that you would change, what would you change and why? And I'm pretty sure I need to trim my vines already. Now coming up the fountain walkway, we can go through here, and then we have a couple doors here. We have this, which leads out to the main hall on the second story, and then we have this one over here, which leads into this other room here. If we turn around here, there is another door, which we can close this, and still need to decorate the roof a little bit. Close that one, and then this will bring us right back out inside of the hall here. And then we have a nice overlooking balcony here. And then this will give us a nice overlook of the greeting area, the fountain, and everything else. We have plenty of rooms up here. And then we're going to have the stairways, which continue to go up. We have another room here. Another stairway here. And another room here. And then this room also has a door that goes into this side of the building as well. Inside of this side... We have a nice meeting room, which I ended up changing this out. You might have noticed on the time lapse that it was not the dark oak, that it was actually spruce. I decided to change it out with the dark oak because I thought that the spruce just blended too much with the flooring. And overall, I'm actually pretty happy that I did because I think that this does look a lot better. Now, if you have a real keen eye, you might have noticed that we have some mats inside of the seat. And these are actually part of the mob head pack from Foxy Notel. Since these are entities, that means that we can push these down into an actual block and we can raise them and lower them as high or as low as we want. What you are seeing here is actually the shulker heads from the mob head pack that he made. And since he has the ability to make these three different sizes, I opted for the larger size, which makes for a nice little mat for you to sit on. That way we can all sit down at the table and have our meetings. Now Gigi will tell you that this is her office, but it is actually the meeting room. So no matter what Gigi says, don't listen to her. That statement should lead to some pretty juicy comments down below in the comment section, so uh, make sure that you check those out. Meanwhile, if you have not noticed the fantastic skylights over this room and also the other room that we were just in, this was designed, I believe, by Renee, and this came out phenomenal as well, and really gives a nice atmosphere for the meeting room on top of the other area as well, which is why we ended up building them in the location that we did. Moving on back over here inside of the hall, we have these three doors that go into the meeting conference room. So we can close these until we get some pressure plates on there. And this whole entire balcony will wrap around and give us a nice overlook, as mentioned, for the fountain. If we go into, well, not this room, it is this one with the staircase. We can go up the staircase. And this is still pretty much incomplete, but this is going to be another room up here too. And this room inside of the center will probably be the room for maybe the mayor or something. Now, don't look for us to have an actual player as a mayor on the server. I mean, maybe, but we'll probably end up putting a villager in there. Or maybe a frog or something like that. 
Yeah, a frog is a mirror. That could be interesting. But needless to say, there is still a ton of work to do up here. Somebody definitely needs to fix that roof. Look, the brick's even uneven. Look, look how horrible that is. Who would do such a thing? And then of course this beautiful catwalk that goes all the way around here following the wood grain flooring all the way to the front here. And I believe we'll probably end up putting a door in the front here as well, but we don't currently have one to go out of the balcony. I guess I can make one real quick. Let me make one real quick. There we go. Now we have a door. But we'll make it look more professional inside of the future. I believe it was Gigi that came up with all of the wonderful looking greenery. And she also ended up putting all of the lecterns up here, which makes a very, very nice balcony. And just overall adds to the aesthetics of the build. Now the roof up here will eventually be flat. And that's going to leave us just enough room to be able to make a path to walk back and forth. And then on the very back there, we're going to have a stairwell going up which is going to allow us to get access to this top trapdoor there, which will allow us to get up to that daylight sensor there, and also the other stuff that is going to be in control of running the bell. The bell is going to have redstone, and the redstone is going to allow it to ring every day at noon. Now for the center focal point here, inside of the center, Gigi ended up doing all of these flowers and the coral, which I think just absolutely looks phenomenal. Dark J had the idea of putting the dragon egg here, which really adds to it as well. And then we also had DSP, which came and he helped to do a ton of grinding. And whenever I say grinding, it was a ton of grinding. This was a huge, huge project and it's still not done. And I am just so very thankful for all of the members coming on and doing this huge, huge group build. And it just really makes the town that much more filled out. And I think the town hall just fits in perfectly. But because this is such a huge project, I'm pretty sure that most people want to break from it. So you might not see much of anything on this for a few episodes because we all have a bunch of different things going on and we tend to bounce between projects. That way we don't get burnt out because, well, we're doing a ton of different things and we typically have multiple different projects going at one time. You know, speaking of which, a huge town hall project, a huge factory project, and also a huge ocean monument project that I really need to get back and do some more work on that as well. So there's a ton of stuff going on. But what I want to redirect our attention to now is these two silos. Now you might think of a silo as a relatively simple thing, and they typically are. However, not my silos. My silos are anything but very simple. You see, these silos are going to have a very important job, and that is to, well store a bunch of materials. I'm going to have four different materials in each of these silos and these materials are going to have a ton of storage. As you can see we already have some lights going up one side and we're basically going to be doing the same thing on this side as well. However because I want this entire thing to be fully automated that means that I'm not going to be responsible for hitting buttons or anything else in order to send the materials from one silo to another or from both of the silos over into the factory. I of course want all that to be automated. So if we take a peek into the side here, this is basically what we have going on. And this is something that I call our bus, which I don't know if it has a technical name for it. However, it is pretty much a redstone bus system. The redstone bus system basically means that I can send multiple different signals throughout comparators. And depending on the signal strength that that comparator sees, it's going to select a different material in order to send that into the factory through all of the output tubes. Now because this is a relatively sophisticated circuit, I ended up designing all of this on a creative server and then I ended up bringing it into the server using the structure add-on which has really really helped with building this and not only this but the town hall as well because that was designed on creative as well. However, the biggest problem that I faced when building this was trying to fit all of this inside of a single silo here. As you can see, I really don't have a ton of room and I definitely don't have enough room for a full size red coater. So I ended up using this one here to where I fit it all in and kind of made it custom to fit the surrounding area. So basically what we have is a red coater here and depending on the signal that comes into here with the redstone signal, it will basically light up one of these torches. Whenever it lights up one of these torches, then it is going to extend a sticky piston activating a clock in order to drop everything out of a dropper, which is going to be at the bottom of these chests. And then each one of these chests are going to be a bank. So we have this side here, which will be a bank. This one here will be the second bank. This one here will be the third bank. And then this one here will be the fourth bank. Each bank having the two side-by-side -side chest. All of these will, of course, be red from all of the redstone lamps inside of the front. So I'll be able to know how much material each one of them have at all times. 
All of these are also configured to where they will not only load at double hopper speed, but they will also put out all of the items into the ice stream at double hopper speed. Which means, well, we'll get our materials that much quicker. So we're going to have not only this silo filled up with redstone, but we're going to have this one filled up as well. And they're pretty much going to be a mirror of each other because, well, they both have to function the exact same. The only difference will probably be the output tube up top there. And that's only because this side has that coming out of the top on the left. And this one, of course, has it coming out of the top on the right. However, they are both going to output the items up that stream down this orange tube. And that tube will eventually lead into the factory where it's going to be going through a sorting system in order to basically resort out all of the items. That way the computerized system will be able to know what items are what. That way we can use them appropriately without having any kind of manual input. The final goal is to basically have everything automated aside from the actual crafting part, which with that, well, of course, I'm going to have to do that manually. There's no way around it. However, you might have already caught on to it, but because we're building these exactly the same and really don't have a ton of room to move around inside and rearrange the redstone, that basically means that the sending signal and the receiving signal is going to be the exact same here. So if we have a signal strength of, say, 4 that we input to the system, if we put 4 here, then it's going to request whatever 4 selects inside of the system on this one, but it will also do the same thing over here. So in order to change this around, what we need is we're going to need a total of eight different signals, which would be pretty easy if we had a larger red coder. However, because we don't have room for a larger red coder, we have to pretty much make a decoder inside of the factory, and that's basically going to reroute the signal. That way we can send basically the signals that this needs, which for example will be one, two, three, four, and then instead of sending one, two, three, four for this one, we're going to basically make a decoder inside, where we will have to send 5, 6, 7, and 8 to it. But instead of having the 5, 6, 7, and 8 go directly to this, it's going to go through a decoder. So 5 will equal 1, 6 will equal 2, and so forth. And that will basically make this one where it will operate on the 5, 6, 7, and 8 instead of using the 1, 2, 3, 4 because that's going to be dedicated for the one on the left. I hope that makes sense. I think that it'll make a whole lot more sense once I get all of this built, and then I'll be able to actually show you what I'm talking about. So... Without further ado, let's jump into this head first and uh, get this thing built. Now out of building this entire thing, here comes the most nerve wracking part and that is putting water inside of it. I have a ton of different streams inside of here and bubble columns as mentioned and if any of these leak, well you could just say goodbye to all of my redstone inside of there. Wish me luck. First off we'll throw some in here, there we go and this should only take about 15 million trips back and forth filling this up with water because, well, I only have one bucket. And while I was filling up all of those ice streams with water, I did something that was in typical Ars built fashion. That is, I got distracted. See, flying back and forth through the shopping district to get some supplies, I ended up looking down and I just so happened to see Gigi while she was doing some building. So, uh, I could not help myself. I had to mess with her a little bit. Let's take a look at the clip. Now, Gigi just logged in and I'm pretty sure she's over there working, building a new shop. Now, she won't exactly render in because we're quite a ways away, but let's see if we can't get closer and probably maybe stay up a little higher. That way she can't see us. And then maybe we can get close enough to where she won't be able to see us. Okay, we got a sheep that just rendered in. Still not seeing her. Okay, we got a bed. I see some campfires. Oh, I see her. Don't make a sound. No, I think I got her. I think I got her. Get a little closer. I just got hit with thorns. She's on to us! She's on to us! <laughs> oh! I didn't mean to kill her! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh poor Gigi! Oh man! Oh hi! That was funny. 
I, uh, first... <laughs> I was laughing my butt off. <laughs> I hurried and ran down and set my spawn, because I knew you were going to get me again. <laughs> well, I, I hit you the first time, and, uh... You went out of render because I was like right at the render distance where I could barely see you. <laughs> and I know you could probably see like blocks coming towards you, but you probably couldn't uh -huh. see me at all. But no. I shot the first arrow and I knew that I hit you even though that you unrendered because you have thorns on your armor. So I ended up taking damage. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. Did I get everything? Oh, that was... <laughs> that was funny. I honestly did not mean to kill you. I hope that you didn't lose no, that I don't many mind. levels. No. Oh, I know was... where to get more. That's <laughs> funny. I think I got everything. <laughs> oh. I think I busted my spleen laughing so hard. <laughs> that was funny. It was such a coincidence because I was placing fires too. And then all of a sudden, like, I'm on fire. I was like, wait, no. Oh, wait. And then I saw a pillar coming out. I better hurry and go set my spawn because I was down to like two hearts. <laughs> oh, you're like, uh, that, that hurt a lot more than the fire normally hurts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and then guess what? The uh, mm -hmm. the arrows catch you on fire. The campfires no longer <laughs> will. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, I, just, I don't know. I don't think it's a good change, personally. No. But. But I don't know. It's kind of dumb. Well, I'll let you get back to it. I don't want to make too many spoilers. But I'm going <laughs> to go and uh, go and finish up what I was doing over here, which I've been doing for All the right. past 7 million hours. <laughs> <laughs> it is always a blast whenever I find Gigi before she finds me. Can't help having a little bit of innocent fun. Anyways, let's get back to placing water buckets. Okay, it looks like the first stream is successful. I ended up doing the bottom one all the way over to the bubble vader. Got this bubble vader all filled up, now it's making a nice bubble column, and then the water flows all the way around here, and then it directs everything into this bubble column, which I'm going to have to work on filling next. Okay, I got the second stream done, which is all the way up to the top here. Now I have to work on filling this one here, and then also the other bubble column over there off to the side. So this one is fairly straightforward and simple. I'm going to get this one filled up first, which is going to be our water loop, and then they're just going to bounce up against this chest in order to align to go across the hoppers. However, we also have this stream which is going to feed into this, and it's hard to see, but there's a little piece of soul sand there. That piece of soul sand is going to make sure that everything goes up over that chest and makes it into here. So we got this water source block in, which is flowing around. That's going to bounce everything off of that chest to align it over top of these hoppers. And then we'll have another one here, which is just going to carry whatever does not align on the hoppers all the way around to realign with that chest and go across the hoppers again. Just one big loop. Great news. I think I just about got it all done and I didn't have any spillage. Let's jump down here and hop into spectator mode. And then we can go and take a look and see what exactly is going on in here. As you can see, there's quite a bit of stuff for such a small area. As I mentioned, we have the four different banks here. We have the yellow, the orange, the red, and also the brown. And these are going to hold four different materials. So each one of these banks consists of a double stack of chests going all the way up. So it'd be two, four, six, and eight. And then the way that these are going to be dispensed is if we go down here, we have these droppers and as mentioned these are all set up to be dual hopper speed to dispense into this ice stream once it dispenses inside of this ice stream it's going to go up this bubble column here all the way up until it gets to this ice stream here then it's going to curve around and go up another ice stream and then once it gets all the way up to this other ice stream it's going to go up another bubble column curve all the way around here to make its way into the exit chute now this will eventually have a bubble column and streams inside of it too to drop everything down this chute tube and then it will be able to be processed into the factory from here. However, the way that these are filled is going to be down here. We'll be able to see a bubble column here. Now this bubble column will probably be much deeper. That way we can actually have the ice streams and tubes and stuff running into this to feed it. But once all of the items come inside of here, basically going to go up this bubble column here into this ice stream transporting it over to this bubble column all the way up here and then it's going to zigzag around there's a ton of zigzagging to make its way around all of the components then once it gets over here here's the bubble column hopping over the chest that I was talking about and once it hops over that chest it's going to be dumped inside of this ice stream here 
to where it's going to start rotating around this direction. Once it starts rotating around this direction, it's going to be aligned from that chest there. And then it's going to make its way across all of these hoppers all the way around here. And then whatever's not picked up will continue to make its way all the way around here inside of a loop until everything is picked up. Now, since we're not going to have any other items inside of here than the ones that belong, it's perfectly fine to do this. That way we know everything's going to be picked up and put into storage. Such a small little area to have everything packed inside of here. It wasn't a ton of building, but it was very, very nerve wracking. Now let's do it again. But this time I'm going to do this one off of camera. So with the magic of editing, we'll be able to turn this one into a fully built silo. Just like that, we have a brand new silo here. Well, the silo has been here, but we have a ton of redstone inside of it now, which is very, very exciting, and these two are pretty much duplicate. However, there was a big issue that I ran into, and boy, a big issue it was. It took quite a bit of time in order to suss out what was exactly going on and how I should go about fixing it. Remember, we are in a very limited space. However, that issue is going to have to wait for another episode because we are all out of time for today. I do greatly appreciate all of you guys watching this episode. If you end up liking the video, drop a like down below. It really does help out the channel. And if you have not done so already, consider subscribing. There is a ton of content on the channel. And of course, you always have a new Project Bedrock episode to look forward to. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.